In the previous lesson, we looked at how SDK Spectrum Analyzer can model terrestrial to space interference effects, but it's also really good at doing terrestrial terrestrial effects. And I'll just say this lesson is kind of cobbled together from a bunch of different scenarios that AGI teaches you on their website. Not using any sort of real world knowledge here, just using notional uh, scenario to show you how AGI software can model GPS interference. So it's the same setup that we've had from before. We have this aircraft F-35 flying around, just checking out these islands, going between van Vandenberg and San Diego. However, in this one, I've added some GPS jammers out on these islands that are directionally pointed up towards the Vandenberg area. And there's a lot of different things that you can model for GPS. So you can look at the delusion of precision for this F-35 as it flies around. So let's just do a quick look at that. So it's really straightforward. Basically, I've taken the real orbits of these GPS satellites. Here's all of the different actual real world TLEs for these GPS satellites. And each one is modeling a realistic uh, GPS antenna pattern. So real frequency real power. Cool. So you take all of these different satellites and you want to know what's the DOP for this F-35 as it flies around on its uh, route. Well, here it is right here. Uh, this is GDOP for best four for this F-35 between the three hour period that it's just flying around. And it's kind of cool because it's also tied to the changing location for the F-35. So this isn't just modeled off of a point, a single point in space, but is actually modeled off of the route that the F-35 is flying. Cool. So that's DOP, pretty straightforward. Uh, but we want to look at the effects of these jammers into the battle space, right? So why don't we take a look at the Jeta S caused by the combination of these three jammers against the combination of all those GPS satellites. Here's a look at the changing in Jeta S for the GPS satellites against these three directional jammers. And right now it looks super blocky, not the most uh, visually pretty uh, depiction. But the cool thing about STK is it allows you to use statistical modeling to take that sort of blocky look and turn it into something that's actually kind of pretty to look at. And so really just a click of the button and two seconds of waiting, you can turn that sort of low res look into something that's higher res. Obviously, you could get the same effect by making your analysis area much higher resolution as well. But I think in terms of just getting a quick look, quick J to S chart, and then turning it into something that's visually appealing for an educational purpose, uh, this kind of fits the bill. So let's also add some legends on here so that we can see what we're looking at. So here we can see that the analysis areas are showing uh, at 21 dB J to S for this surface that I placed at 20k, uh, that's what's depicted in green. Then as you get to 41 J to S, that's yellow. 61 J to S is going to be red. You can add this layout so that it's not just floating in this sort of ugly box onto the screens themselves. So let's just throw this one on the 2D graphics window to the lower right. Right now, this plot is sitting at the surface, but you could actually place it at the altitude that you're modeling. So I said this one was being modeled at 20,000. But we can just raise that up to the actual 20,000 feet MSL. So here, instead of showing it at the uh, surface level, we've got it shown and depicted at 20,000. So let's just kind of zoom down so we can see what this looks like. And I can see rather than being at the surface, this uh, large bug splat was actually put higher in altitude, kind of at the altitude where the F-35 would be flying. And so this bug splat is one way to show effects into the battle space. But what if we wanted to just see the change in dB according to this template here as the F-35 was flying on its route itself? And so there's actually a lot of different ways for us to show this. So here you can see I've colored the F-35's route according to which of those J to S's it was receiving. So if it's green, it's above 21. If it's yellow, it's above 41. If it's red, it's above 61. And the F-35's route as it flies through is uh, changing altitude. So it's going from 30,000 down to 10,000, 17,000, etc. So that's why it doesn't perfectly line up with the bug splat that we looked. It was just looking at the 20,000. But what's really great is we can just tie the J to S to the specific platform itself rather than looking at sort of this generic area. And obviously I love the visual depictions, but you can also do all of this as reports. So here's the uh, J to S for the F-35 as it flies around and how it changes. Probably peaks somewhere around 60 as you fly through. Here's a 64. And you can just go right to this animation time and see exactly where it is at that time. It looks even like this was during a bank, which kind of makes sense. You basically are exposing more of the antenna, which is actually being modeled pointing up off of the top of the 35. So here off to the attitude screen, you can see kind of the direction of the uh, antenna that's on the top of the 35. And what you're seeing here in different colors is just a different gain, depending on the, the look angle into the antenna. So I guess it's not too surprising that we had these peaks kind of on these turn, uh, curves here. You can see another one also occurred right about there, which also looks like a turn. So you're actually getting some realistic banking and 
how that exposes more of the surface area of the antenna to the jammers. Uh, pretty cool. Sorry, I showed you guys the report, but I didn't show you. You can also just do this as a graph and show how the JDS is changing over time. So here's another spike right here. And yeah, we can just kind of dial into these different spikes. So here's this one, which was a right bank. Here's this one which also looks like a bank. There's this one, a hard right bank. We're pretty far away from the jammers, but you can just see how exposing the antenna directly into the pointing of the jamming profile is just going to increase your J to S. It's just really cool that we can uh, take a look at this tie again between the physical, the RF environment, and even dial into specific times of interest and see why those were so bad for the actual platform. And right now we're modeling JDS, but you can do navigation accuracy, received power, any sort of figure of merit you can kind of define, you can show uh, according to these different tools. And unfortunately, there wasn't very much mountainous terrain in our scenario because we were just looking at some very flat islands out in the ocean. But what's really cool about doing these bug splats in SDK versus other software is you can stretch the bug splats themselves over a real mountainous terrain and then kind of get this really cool distortion effect. It just can give you like this deeper level of understanding that the reason why my accuracy is so bad there is because I'm basically in the dome of Mount St. Helens and I'm getting essentially all the masking from this side of the mountain to where I'm not able to get good signal. Whereas this one is slightly more open because Mount St. Helens erupted and blew off that side of the mountain. And it's just really cool to kind of see how this all uh, fits into actual modeled terrain.